Today's guest is Mariah Brown. So after enjoying a full ride scholarship to Yale, she learned the mainstream approach to women's health as a nurse practitioner. Um, And then eventually really started to go on a journey of expanding her knowledge, traveling the world, um, became a functional medicine practitioner, a certified doula and midwife, um, was trained in Reiki, Peruvian shamanism, Hawaiian plant medicines. Um, She actually lived in Hawaii in the area that I lived in. And we met at a mastermind before I ever knew I was moving here, but I just, yeah. If, if somebody's connected to Hawaii, I'm probably going to get along with them pretty well. She's she's a beautiful soul and a powerful one and has built an incredible business helping women regain their vi- vitality and health. Um, she does also work with men, but um, has a lot of focus on helping women understand their chemistry and their consciousness and what is leading to the health outcomes that they're getting and also the... I'd say the spiritual outcomes, the soul outcomes that they're getting. So she's just a wealth of knowledge. I'm super happy to have her on the show today. Uh, We'll go ahead and dive into it. Here is Mariah Brown. Okay, so Mariah, we met at a mastermind and super connected because you lived in Hawaii for a long time. And um, Hawaii was, at that time, I had no idea I would be moving to Hawaii, but it was just such a special place to my heart. You actually lived right here where I'm living and you do um, similar but different work. Like we're both very passionate about real optimal health, which has so, I mean, labs and nutrition and exercise and sunlight and all these practical approaches, they are really important, but you go deeper into the energetics of health. Like I do of like, what does it mean to like really be thriving? And so I'm excited to have my audience hear from you today because you went that Western medicine route, right? You did the full ride scholarship to Yale and became a nurse practitioner and like checked all the boxes and did all the things. And then you made that brave transition into like, let's go deeper. Let's keep going deeper. So can you share a little bit about what you do now, what that journey sure. has been like to bring to what you're bringing to your practice now and, yeah. you know, give us and the, the scoop. And the bit and the bit of the journey behind it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you know, it, of course there's weaving and ups and downs and surprises and expected moments and all the stuff. But so now I feel like honestly, what I do is I midwife people through chapters of change. Nice. And so that looks like um, online programs and courses and women's retreats for uh, women who are really hungry to just absolutely come alive. Mm -hmm. It's called the Women's Vibrancy Code, and I have the Women's Vibrancy Code podcast. And through a functional medicine lens, of course, we're looking at adrenals and thyroid and hormones and uh, gut health and all the stuff Mm -hmm. that's important physiologically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then also, like once we move those walls out of the way, so to speak, break down those bricks, Mm -hmm. then people really get to look in the mirror and go, huh, all right, I no longer have the excuse of being exhausted. I no longer have the excuse of no hormones and no libido and no sleep or no muscle tone, whatever it may be. That's out of the the way. So now who do I really want to be in the world? Mm -hmm. And what is my passion and my purpose and my freedom? Mm want to feel like look like and so then we get to come alive Mm. um have you what question have you found like you know um i find you know let's say somebody has gut issues or they have hypothyroidism or adrenal issues and all this stuff i have found that it doesn't even it doesn't help much to just quote unquote fix it without addressing the deeper belief systems and things that led to that state in the first place. Like, yeah, once in a while you might like somebody picked up a parasite or something, but for the most part, it was really like the way someone was engaging with life and their stress responses and their beliefs about running themselves into the ground. And I don't matter. And like, I come last. And, you know, can you share a little bit about like what you have found, I guess, you know, you have your your Reiki and shamanism and like this side of you too. Like what have yeah. you found um, leads women into these places in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So first, absolutely. And when I left brick and mortar and built my online program, I brought in a team of master coaches 
to really address it from a holistic perspective. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. I don't think that it can just be nutrition and supplementation. I don't think it can just be medications. I also don't think it can just be mindset. Right. Um, You know, there are some people out in the world that that do believe that mindset alone and belief system shifts and prayer is all you need. I actually think that our food is our medicine and and our medicine is our food and we need to move our bodies. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I brought in a team of master coaches. It's me. I have a team functional dietitian. I have a trauma release specialist. There's a team mindset coach and there's a team sexologist. Amazing. And so really, truly, this is not like a quick fix. Right. right? We're not going to put a Band-Aid on a festering wound. Right. I don't want to just spend time giving people a fish. I want to teach them how to fish. Right. And so absolutely, uh, from, from a multidisciplinary, holistic way, I brought in trauma release because sometimes there's a, th- a moment right. that we experienced when we were in the womb or when we were two weeks old or even past life stuff that has created a pattern yep. in our way of being and our way of thinking that plays out unconsciously, yep. um, simmering underneath the surface. And so... The technology that I brought in is called REST and with two R's. And so my clients receive REST sessions. So we get to also look at, at the, the web, that sticky spider web that holds us to past, present, and future and people and experiences mm-hmm. that might be the thing that's playing out with the hypothyroidism and, you know, we're fixing the gut health and decreasing the inflammation and helping the woman speak her voice and doing the poses that are going to bring blood flow to the throat. And maybe she's on level thyroxine and some zinc and selenium and nothing is moving the needle. And we go, all right, right, let's look at where are these old patternings and where's our relationship with our sensuality and our sexuality Mm -hmm. and our guilt and our shame and our passion. And, um, and so to answer the qu- kind of both of your questions mixed mm-hmm. together, I grew up in a very wild kind of open-minded childhood. My parents were both married and divorced multiple times. And, you know, there was Judaism, there was Christianity, there was Buddhism, there was at times uh, living on the Osho ashram in Eastern Oregon and, and um, just a very open-minded experience. I had guides Mm. that started speaking to me at age six and I didn't know what in Mm. the heck it was. It was scary. I would just Mm. cover my ears and say to my mom, it's the voices. Mm. And then I ended up in business and studied marketing for my undergrad and worked for Procter and Gamble and, and kind of this very different trajectory. And, uh, in 2000, my best friend from high school asked me to be at her birth. We were living in LA and I said, of course. And that moment of, of watching her power mm. and watching life emerge from her body changed my life. Wow. And there was no, no defying the fact that I was a, a midwife. Mm. Um, and even though it made no sense, I, you know, I, took a trip down to Peru and hiked up to the Inca Trail up to Machu Picchu. And it was on that hike, I just decided. And I went back and quit Mm. my job, you know, early Mm. twenties, over six figures and on the the route to leadership in corporate. And I thought I'd get my MBA and I just left it all. And I booked a one year around the world trip. Wow. And volunteered with midwives in West Africa. And I didn't even know if I'd been accepted at grad school. Wow. And it was while I was traveling that I was accepted at Yale. Mm. And so, yes, I took this kind of traditional allopathic route to get my nurse mm. practitioner training at Yale. But at the same time, every spring break and every summer, I was studying with the home birth midwives and the mountain midwives in Nicaragua and in Hawaii. Amazing. And I was poking in and spending time with naturopaths and acupuncturists and got Mm. my certification in Reiki and, and water birth and, Mm. um, and then worked in Hawaii for seven years where of course there's this, uh, more, it's just generally accepted to bring in various modalities. Mm. And yeah, studied Peruvian shamanism and La'au Lapa'au, which is, you know, Hawaiian plant medicine. And it just, it was always part of me. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember when I was at Yale, one of my professors did not like my style. She tried to get me kicked out at one point. She said, wow. Mariah's too, um, what were her words? I was um, uh, pretty much, I don't prescribe enough. Wow. That I was too alternative in my approach and that it was, <laughs> that it was uh, at the risk of the safety of my patients. Wow. And I won the case and, you know, got to finish my degree at Yale. And then I've had since 2007 to go, all right, what does this look like to, to be mm-hmm. a women's health provider, to be a midwife? Um, and then moving online, it's kind of almost to be a coach. Yeah, right. Right. To, to yeah. hold the container, kind mm-hmm. of like the midwife in the space. Mm-hmm. to trust mm-hmm. in everyone's absolute potential of power and surrender. Um, but knowing that sometimes the energy is outside of our hands. Yeah. And we, we get to trust that mm-hmm. everything is relevant and everything is important. So that's kind of a long answer, but did it answer your it. question? Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You said something a, a minute ago that, really resonated with me. You said some people think it's just all mindset, right? And, you know, I'm I'm sure you've read the biology of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And like, we understand like how our physiology can follow our psyche and our belief systems and all of that. And I also, um, I see that, okay, like, let's say you went in a, in a um, ice bath, and then you jumped into a hot tub you would be cooling down the water in the hot tub a little bit and the hot tub would be warming you up. And that's kind of how I see like our psyche and our bodies, like our physiology is impacting us and we are impacting our physiology. It's like a relationship. And I really appreciate your stance on that because like, for example, let's say somebody's hormones are completely a wreck and they have SIBO, like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and everything's inflamed and they're just trying to like mindset their way into being happy. Well, it's like, well, if we can remove the SIBO and we can get your inflammation down and get your hormones functioning, I'm sure you see this all the time. They're like, oh, I'm just not, I was crying every day about everything and I was super sad and all of my feels and now I'm just feel okay with it and I can manage myself better with that. I'm, I'm, you know, you, you see those shifts happen when someone gets the blockages as you kind of referred to in the beginning of the physiology out of the way, right? It's, it's much easier to quote unquote, do your mindset work when your physiology is operating appropriately and if your, you know, psyche is, you know, gotta run myself into the ground. I, I, I and this is what I want to shift into you next with women is like, I, one of the big patterns that I see, I don't know about you is like the program for women is your value is in how much you give to everybody else. Like mm-hmm. if you are the mom that does everything for your kids and everything for your spouse and you're, you know, the great sister and the great friend and the great grandma that usually involves giving, 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 giving. And I see, you know, while women are naturally nurturing and we love to do it, I see an imbalance in that where it's almost like, well, who am I and what is my worth if I'm not giving? Like, I don't feel comfortable just like laying here and enjoying and kind of being in that like queen energy. Like we're missing that a little bit. Is That's a big thing I, I see with women. And I was wondering if you could yeah. hit on some of the more spiritual and belief systems that are yeah. kind of wrecking our women right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I see it a lot. There's this quick fix culture. Mm. We're mm. accustomed to, you know, you Google something and you have the answer within a split second. Right. You take an ibuprofen and maybe the headache is away, you know, gone within 30 minutes. Right. So right. we're in this quick fix space. And so often you know, women will come back to me and they've just been put on the pill. They've just been put on a medication and there you go. Your symptom is gone. (laughs) It's like, okay, well, if I'm looking at a tree and the leaves are yellowing or browning because it's diseased and I give you a bucket of green paint and a ladder, you can go create paint those leaves green and say, there you go. It's green again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, wait a minute. Did we actually look at where's the quality of the soil and is it is it getting water and light and what's going on here? Right. And so to actually foundationally address fa- cause and not just look for the next quick fix because there's this general tone of I have to give, I have to do, I have to give, I have to do. And somehow 
worthiness is tied. And, you know, I think when it comes to conversations around gender right now, it's so charged Yeah. around concepts of masculine and feminine and pronouns. Right. And for me, I go, all right, if we say egg and sperm, <laughs> if egg represents feminine hmm. and sperm represents masculine, we all have masculine and feminine, right? Right. And yet an egg matures and ovulates. It leaves the ovary. And you know what it does? It hangs out. Right. Hey, I am in receivership. Right. Who's going to find me? Mm -hmm. Who's going to penetrate me? And the sperm are out there like running their asses off and chasing <laughs> and fighting their way and me first and they're dying off and they're finding their way, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I feel like there's a general imbalance. Yeah. And most of the women that I work with are very ambitious women. Many of them are entrepreneurs and CEOs and out balling in the world, but they're existing so much in masculine energy. Mm -hmm. Um. We, we lose this sense of where's the surrender? Yeah. Where's the receivership? Where's the flow? Where's the intuition? Where's the circular versus linear? Where's mm -hmm. the trust versus predictability? Mm. Right? Where's the receivership versus doing? Um, and so we think that it's weak to surrender. We've somehow created this pattern where many women have forgotten how to be in full receivership. Mm -hmm. And instead we go, we go, we do, we do, we serve, we serve thinking that that's adding value. But I go, all right, if you're giving from a depleted space yeah, versus giving from a completely filled up intuitive, round, robust, vital, a live place mm -hmm. you look at who you're giving to what are they actually receiving right um right. There, there's a um, quechua word it's called aini a-y-n-i aini mm -hmm. and it stands for sacred reciprocity nice and um what they believe hawaiians hawaiians are big on that too as you know yeah. reciprocity yeah yeah yeah, where mm -hmm. a, at least from a from a Peruvian shamanism or Quechua perspective, when there's an imbalance mm -hmm. in giving and receiving, mm -hmm. whether it's you know out in nature, the trees breathing in the air that we breathe out, and we're breathing in the air that they give us, right? There's mm -hmm. balance, mm -hmm. and when when something goes out of balance, they believe that that's where all disease comes from. Mm -hmm. Cancer, wow. depression, anxiety, nice. ailments, right. fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, right. whatever it is, it, it's really stemming from an imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a lot of space for us to revisit, particularly for women, the power that comes in, this, in, in the energy of surrender mm -hmm. and how potent our ability to receive is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You hit on worth. Um one day I was, you know how you get in those little spiritual vortexes. I, I don't know, just these like downloads are just coming in. I was just driving around and it was like, what? and I felt this kind of like almost little like chuckling energy of like this, uh, this, this thing that humans are onto right now with the know my worth and I am worthy stuff mm -hmm. is a little off. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's necessary, but it was, I was being shown like, does a tree need to know that it's worthy? Does a flower need to know that it's enough? Like it, it yeah. when you're really there, you won't even need to ask the question anymore. You just know, you just, you just be, and you know, if you bloom, cool. If you die, cool. Like it's just this, yeah. you just are, you know, yeah. um, it's, it takes work, right? Because, you know, I'll share a quick example. Like, I remember my mom passed away a couple months ago, but I have a memory of the last time when she was living in Virginia, where I was raised, I went out to visit and, you know, my brother's family was there. My family was there. And my mom made this huge, like my mom showed love through food. Right. So she made this huge, like it would probably would have had a hundred people. It was that insane. 
And while we appreciated it, while we were all sitting around the couch afterwards talking, my mom was falling asleep the entire time because she had mm. stayed up till the wee hours of the morning making this feast. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I almost wish you had just ordered, I mean, thank you, but I almost wish you had just ordered pizza so that we could talk to you. You're so yeah. exhausted from, you know, this, I know you felt it was loving and it was, but like you ran yourself so into the ground that now we can't even talk to you, you know, um, mm -hmm. cause you're so exhausted from it. And so I've had to do a lot of deep work. And like you said, it's not a quick fix. You don't say, Oh, okay. Don't exhaust myself and find my value in giving and doing. Like it doesn't work like that. Like it's gonna. It's been a journey, and it happens through investing and in coaches, mentors. You know all of these things, which I have doing the deeper work when the rubber hits the road of like, what? Well, hey, what's going on here? Have you noticed how you've been like boom, 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 boom? Like, let's feel that. How does that feel? You know, okay, what's going on? Like, where are you getting your value wrapped into this? Or, you know, where can you let go? What's not feeding you anymore? You know, it's not reciprocity, like you're saying. It's this yeah. overgiving energy. And that takes work and it takes time to undo a lot of those patterns. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you highlighting that. It's really I important. Love your, well, and that story is so perfect. Mm, you know, I imagine... Part of it is her love language is gifts and acts of right. service. And it's her right. way of saying, I love you. Right. But um, if we do it at our own expense. Yeah. Right. What What is actually being received? Right. And we can, we can end up depleting so much. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I see women working so hard and trying to build this thing. Mm -hmm. But then... You know, where is the the moments of, of deep presence? Right. And and love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was on a call with a client earlier today. And, and even when she has time with her children or her husband, it doesn't feel like there's quality because there's she's always distracted. Yes, this is there's huge. There's always the, the, the to-do list playing in the Can't back of the mind. Can't sit still, could be yeah. doing something else right now. Yeah, or the phone right there. And I go, mm -hmm. okay. Can you lock the phone in a drawer in the kitchen and allow yourself to compartmentalize and put it aside just for a bit and 10 minutes of saturated yep. present time mm -hmm. will feel so much more valuable for mm -hmm. both the giving and the receiving in this sacred mm -hmm. reciprocity. Mm -hmm. And 10 minutes will be more potent than if you went on a two hour whatever, but you're not present in there. Right. And this is why, you know, um, I was thinking about this the other day with women, I, I, the Barbie movie kind of exacerbated this for me, I thought, because it was mm. kind of this, this tirade. It, my daughter and I really struggled with that movie. <laughs> we had to walk out for a minute because it, it was, uh, to me, felt like it was coming very much from the wounded feminine, right? This big speech yeah. was like, they say we have to be skinny, but not too skinny. And they say we have to make our own money, but not too much money. And they say this and they say that. Yeah. And like... Yeah. And I get it. You know, I went through that kind of phase of realization, but those things only work if we as women agree to them, you know, like the the real work is doing our own work of letting go of all of that, mm -hmm. letting go. And, and this presence work, you know, it, I can't emphasize enough how important this is, what you just highlighted. It's a, it's a huge thing that I see also with women yeah. is, um, you know, just being with their family, they, they're like in, going insane, kind of, they're like, they cannot allow themselves to sink in and, and just yeah. it physiologically just relax yeah. into the moment with nothing planned, you know, just, I, I, my, I, I, what I counsel them is like, I want you to just sit on the couch and get, like you said, not, I don't want you to have your phone and no game plan at all. And yeah. just watch what happens. Your kids will just, they will come like flies to light, you know, moths to light. Like they will just appear and yeah. have no game plan, nothing. You know, it's not like we're going to go do this now and that and blah, blah, blah. And just uh, allow that experience for a little while, make eye contact with them, listen, and don't have anything to say back. Like just totally, just like, totally. Oh, oh it, hmm. it, I practice this. It's amazing. <laughs> right. It's amazing. I'll just go sit in the chair, turn the fireplace on, maybe bring out some knitting. Right. And I have three young children. And next thing I know, all three of them They're are all in there. the room. Yep. And they don't need us to be doing anything. They don't even need us to be talking. 
Yeah. But they feel so fed and connected just yep. by the presence mm -hmm. of mom. And I love mm -hmm. your example of, you know, I, I can't imagine a tree is wondering when it's going to blossom. And right. Am I, I good a, enough? Is this good enough shade and oxygen, yeah, guys? Right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> Maybe I should change colors. Right? Yeah. Oh, you don't like this shade? <laughs> <laughs> but I was at a, around New Year's Eve time. I was with a friend down in Piedmont, like in the San Jose area. And she was looking out in her backyard at, um, I don't remember, like a Japanese maple or a dogwood tree, something that blossoms. Okay. And it was so fascinating. She's like, man, this is so amazing. Just down the block there's a line of these bushes and all of them are in full bloom and mine doesn't even have a bud on it yet. And we go, yeah, nobody questions yeah. the intelligence or worthiness of that plant. Maybe that plant had a different amount of sunlight or different yeah. weather patterns or who knows, but it just is mm -hmm. and it will blossom. Mm -hmm. And so we simply, it's like, um, the other analogy I give is the bank. Like if you think about a river, the banks versus the water, they're both vital. Yeah. We have to have the banks, the solidity, the dependability, the logic, the linear, mm -hmm. the kind of push force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And without the banks, we have a flood. The water won't ever make it to the ocean. Mm-hmm. But also there has to be water, otherwise it's cracked and dried and there's nothing there and the water flows. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be hard and solid. It's, it's just flowing its way down and it's intuitive mm -hmm. and it's um, round. And, you know, that's also like, where is there an imbalance where we spend exactly. too much of our time trying to hold it all together and be the banks, mm -hmm. the banks to our mm -hmm. household, the banks to our health, the banks mm -hmm. of like, I'm going to be the expert of all things. And I'm going to Google search what's going on with my thyroid and, and like ask right. my friends and go to GNC and order all my own supplements. And, mm -hmm. and I've got this, I don't have right. to ask for help. Right. And always in that place, always, always, always. And next yeah. I got to mop my floors and then I got to right. do that thing for my friend. And then I go, yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. all right. Well, what if the dishes pile up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love this is music to my ears because as you know, in this area of Hawaii that I live in, there's a lot of spiritual communities and yeah. it's a very flowy energy. And then, you know, I also run a business and have four kids and I love um, allowing whatever feels in alignment in the moment to be the guide, you know, cause so last week I didn't have my kids. I have them every other week. And, you know, I knew that I needed to do a deep clean on my house and I knew that I'm writing a book right now and I could use that time to write the book. And like, you know, I could you know, think about my business and all these things. And I just felt, uh, -uh girl, you go dance, you go, yeah. you go enjoy just, and it's nothing got deep cleaned. It's clean enough, you know, it'll, we'll get there, but like, it's so healthy to, I think, allow ourselves to come out of our, you know, rigid frameworks, Uber responsibility as, yeah. as our soul kind of directs us to, but yeah. also for me, it feels healthy also like, mm, I know that I'm creating goodness and, and my soul says yes to some of these more, you know, going to the gym, exercising, getting up early, going to bed early. It's a little more rigid, but like, I'm not afraid to go out of it as my soul asked me to. Mm -hmm. And I also really appreciate being in it and the the joy that I experience from that. So I, I really yeah. appreciate that analogy yeah. of like, it, both are wonderful. Yeah. And I imagine <laughs> there's women listening that going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy for you to say. I've got this, that, and the other thing that gets right. in my way. And, and where do I begin and yeah. I see you just begin. Yeah. You take a step right. and you find an extra five minutes where the, the right. TV's off or put in the garage for a week. You go, right. where, where is there space? It's so fascinating because I feel like so much of what I do is, is even though I'm not attending births, I'm still showing up as a midwife every day. And of the hundreds of births that I attended, they were pretty much all natural births, whether it was in a hospital or a birthing center or a you know, a, a yurt in Haiti. Um, mm -hmm. And it's about finding that calm in the midst of the storm. Mm, yes. <laughs> and it, you know, a contraction only happens for 60 seconds, mm -hmm. maybe 90 seconds at most. 
Mm. But you find that calm. You find your breath. Yes. And one of my favorite teachers, she said, Mariah, you can create a midwifery environment anywhere. Beautiful. You know, gosh, there was one day up at North Hawaii Community Hospital. I think it was like Christmas Eve. And for some reason, I think every woman on the island went into labor that day. (laughs) (laughs) And they all came flooding in. And we had every labor room full. We had turned the tub room into a labor room, a closet into a labor room, the NICU into a labor room. I had two women laboring in hallways and we were creating some type of like boundary system. And it was like, it's all good. Mm. Mm. What what do you need? Yeah. You need your breath. Yeah. You need need your sense of presence in Mm -hmm. whatever the storm is. You're out there in the ocean getting pummeled by the waves. You know that there's a pause between the waves. Right where you relax and you breathe. Mm -hmm. And so where do we create moments of that? And yes, of Mm -hmm. course, address your nutrition and your supplementation and bring in support and take those damn hats off and allow yourself to bring in support and invest heavily in yourself in that support. But find that support that's gonna also help you find your pause and your eye of the storm because it's within you no matter what is going on in your life. Mm No matter how crazy it feels and the responsibilities and the and the debt and the unknown and the feeling alone or the feeling overworked and the sleep deprivation, I promise you it's there. Mm -hmm. There is an eye of the storm that you can find. Yeah. 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 Uh, And I like to build in little trigger type hacks like that. Like when I'm driving, silence is something I entertain a lot. So just be and just be fully out of not even in thoughts, not even in my thoughts, you know, even if it's just for a minute or two to just be practice being, you know, and you can weave that in at any time. Um, I wanted to end with um, a little bit more nitty gritty uh, physiological. What are some of the big hitters that you're running into in terms of physiological issues with women? Yeah. Yeah. Thyroid. Yeah. I mean, just wow. Mm -hmm. Um, Particularly over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, You know, I think it comes down to, are we speaking our voice? Um, What's going on with our adrenal well-being? Um, What's being just missed and underdiagnosed? Is there, you know, where are we missing the boat with malnutrition? Partially because even if we're eating well, Right. The food that we're eating is being grown in soil that's depleted. There's so many different pieces there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, so many women that I see, they've, they have all the telltale symptoms. They've gone to their provider and their provider orders, orders a TSH with a reflex T4 and says, oh, everything's fine. Mm-hmm. We look at it and we go fine. According to what? <laughs> like, let's actually look at comprehensive, right? Mm-hmm. We want your Go if you have if you have a blood test. Look at your TSH. Is it between one and two? Have they ordered your free T three? Have they ordered your reverse T right. three? Have they ordered your thyroid antibodies? Um, and then the other thing I want to say that I have all of the clients that I work with, and I work with men too, but all mm. of the clients is bringing in adaptogens, lots of them, nice, nice. and having them drink adaptogen elixirs. Yeah. So we've got a protein source and a fat source and the adaptogen. So now we're addressing all the value of protein and blood sugar management and quality fat, as well as the nervous system Mm -hmm. unwinding so that Mm -hmm. we can help your body better adapt to stress. Mm. Yeah, that's very wise counsel, very needed in our stimulating world today. Mm -hmm. Like not only do we have all these programs running that have been running for generations, you know, of like, go do, you know, scarcity kind of survive, like, Mm -hmm. but on top of it, we have cell phones and technology speeding us up at rates that are just, it's a little hard to adapt to that quickly for human beings. So I think that's a really wise piece of And oh, by the way, it's an endocrine disruptor. And so is so is light and these technology pieces, right? right? So it's actually throwing off our our core sense of safety as well as our hormones. Right. Yeah. 
Um, okay, well, let's wrap up with uh, you have retreats, your website. You know, can you tell people like what you have to offer? Sure, I would love to. So I'm I'm very approachable. You're welcome to just find me. Okay, on the website, you can apply for a call, um, listen to the Women's Vibrancy Code podcast, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, just send me a message. And really, I have a lot of different offerings, and my preference is to simply hop on a call and come up with a personalized plan. Mm -hmm. um, anything from, you know, six month VIP experience to group programs, self paced nice. membership, functional medicine testing. Uh, like I said, a team of master coaches that, you know, some people want access to all of them and some don't we get to create a personalized thing. And then retreats, if you happen to be listening to this before April, my next women's retreat is in Ashland, Oregon, April 12th, 13th, and 14th. And it's three days to just absolutely come alive and get nice. really clear nice. with what aspects aren't working. Yeah. And what do we need to change from a doing perspective, but even more importantly, what do we wanna change from a being perspective? Mm -hmm. And to allow our power and our sense of sensuality to be fully expressed in um, a safe container with other women. Yeah, I think women, we um, we're kidding ourselves if we think that we can do it without a community of other women. Right. And there are ways to create safety mm -hmm. where the past wounding of cattiness and ways that women can sometimes be competitive just to have that as an absolute non-negotiable no yeah and instead have a really safe space where women can gather together mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um reprogram some of the patterns nice yeah it's big it's work good. i appreciate it's you so much and guys her website is mariahbrown.com and we'll link that up um yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. So aligned. It's just like, so awesome to see you like, um, yeah. showing up so big to the plate on this. Mm. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for coming on and sharing with us yeah. some of your experiences today. Thank you. Thank you. And just for those listening, Mariah is all A's. So it's M A R A Y A. So if you find me in all the places, M A R A Y A Brown, like the color. And yes, absolutely. Same to you, Tara, for the work that you do, for the container that you hold, for the decisions that you made for your well-being, your family's well-being. They're big. Thanks. And just Thank to you. really say I see you and honor you. Likewise. Mm -hmm.